we're really excited. This is a this is a new thing for us. Um, we we've had partner calls before, and many of you have been a part of them. Uh, but this is uh, a a, new, a newer thing for us, where we're having a quarterly call, and we're going to um, I'm going to be arranging them around a theme, and um, and then inviting uh, our uh, partner uh, a, a partner to um, present at these as well um, and so look for these in it'll be April June October January and uh, each time we're going to be looking kind of diving a little bit more deeper into some of kind, of kind of based on some of our storytelling and interpretive themes that we um, that we're unveiling today um, and some of you have seen the draft version of these um, but we're really excited to be sharing them um and yeah just for a reminder if you can uh keep muted that'd be great if you have questions you're welcome to put them in the chat as we go and we'll have some time at the end to have a discussion um i'm going to pass it over to superintendent naomi torres good morning welcome everybody uh, so great to see you all um see your face see your smiling faces um, thank you for joining us in this first call, first call with our partner calls. We're uh, really excited to kick this off and have the first of many um, quarterly calls. So I'm really grateful for you joining in on this inaugural call. We've got a couple of things rolling out like this, these calls. Um, and really like on our mind is uh, this commemoration year of the 250 to 2025, 2026. And so we're hoping these calls will begin the conversation. Hopefully you'll get to uh, meet each other and see what other uh, partners are doing along the trail. Um, the other uh, the other big thing that we're rolling out is also our foundation document. We finally got it, uh, the final uh, accessible uh, small overview and then the full document. And so after uh, this call, we'll be mailing those out to you. Uh, feel free to reach out to either Christopher or myself by email and we'll be sure to uh, get a get a digital copy to you. Um, so we're really excited and looking at this uh, 250 commemoration. What does it look like? How, what are the stories that we uh, tell of this nation's history and, um, and then make sure that the narratives that we share are uh, diverse and inclusive. And, um, you know, so we really have a really good sense of this nation's history and looking at um, a this commemoration year. Um, so excited, excited that you're joining us and uh, just wanna pass it on to back to Christopher so uh, we can get started. Thank you, Naomi. Um, I'm Christopher. Um, I've been with the trail here for about three years. Uh, many of you know me, I'm the uh, interpretation program manager. Um, I'm based here in uh, near Santa Cruz, California, um, our office is in the Bay Area, um, our office space that we've we've had uh, in in Richmond. Um, but I I did want to say at the top of this that I will be uh, relocating. I'm going to stay with the trail, but I'm going to be moving to Tucson, Arizona, and um, <laughs> and uh, that is uh, kind of a move for a personal reason. But it actually works pretty well for our operations. We've been working mainly remotely for uh, since the pandemic, and we've feel feel like we've been doing that very you know pretty pretty well and effectively um it will um give us some opportunities i think to pay attention to uh uh, uh projects and 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 partners uh partner work that's going going on down there so uh stay tuned for when that's going to happen we're still waiting uh to get the green light for uh the regional uh uh from the regional um director and and the other uh bureaucratic things that go into that but i'm excited it's a good move my partner has a job down there so uh, we're going to be headed that way um we're also hiring for uh the vacant trail planner position and we hope to have that uh filled fairly soon um so there'll be a an added uh member to our team right now you're seeing the whole team it's uh me and naomi uh we also are looking forward to having a melon fellow uh come and join us and do some really critical research on the trail. We're really excited about that. We'll be sharing more about that 
uh, probably in the next call, uh, the, the one that'll be coming up in, in June, or you may hear from us before that. Um, and then, yeah, maybe there's some opportunities for interns that are going to join us too. There's a lot of great stuff happening. We're really excited. Um, the main thing that we wanted to share with you today is, is as Naomi mentioned, is our foundation document, which is rolling out. Um, we will be mailing out uh, a hard copy to those who want it. Um, and, and what will also be uh, after this call, um, emailing the PDF to everybody that's what was invited to this and so you can have a, a look at it um foundation documents i you know they're they're a very internal usually a very internal national park service thing and national park site thing and so uh it's uh it it's we took a different uh spin on it because we're a national historic trail and the part of the national trail system we use the as an opportunity to include our partners so we just wanted to thank like Naomi, uh, as Naomi mentioned, um, just wanted to thank everybody that uh, that participated and helped us to um, to to really make this an important document, not just something that we had to do, not th not just something that was part of uh, um, of an ask from a regional director or something. We really took the, took an advantage, took our time with it, and and some of these elements I'll be sharing today. I wanted to share that the. Um, there, there's two there's two elements of the um the foundation document it's a, there's a concise uh overview and then there's the larger foundation document that's many pages long um i'm going to share the overview today just so you have a sense uh of what that looks like i'm gonna bring up the pdf here um i can't quite see the chat so if somebody could say uh, unmute themselves and see, let me know if they're seeing it <laughs> that'd be helpful it's uh, big enough for me we can okay. see it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so this is the this is our foundation document. It's the overview uh, uh, document. The the front cover here with a, a large photo. Um, it's four pages long. And there's uh, it's a, one of those uh, um, a booklet style where it's just a one fold. And um, so we have different elements of this uh, foundation document. And it's really to define what the trail is and what our purpose is. We'll be looking to this often as a planning document to remind ourselves what, you know, what we're doing and where we're going, what are some of the important things that we're looking at. And it gave us the opportunity to kind of look, uh, and, and I think a, a big element is to broaden the narratives, right? And to uh, understand that, the trail was uh, established to um, to commemorate and interpret the uh, the route and the complex story and the compelling landscapes of the 1775 and 1776 Anza colonizing expedition from Sonora, Mexico to current day San Francisco, California. Whether entwined with a city or isolated from civilization, the trail offers adventure, diverse cultural perspectives, multiple narratives, and an opportunity to experience history by linking the past with the present. Working with volunteer trail groups, trail managers strive to develop, maintain, and steward the trail for present and future generations to use and enjoy. Um, this is the, the uh, you know, the uh, specific nature of the, of how we operate. Uh, and so it is pulled out here in the text. Uh, we also have a significance of uh, the trail significance and the statements of significance here. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I, um, um, you'll have an opportunity to read through this uh, when I send the document out. Um, I think uh, there are some some great elements to pull out. I think one is um, to identify the that this expedition and its history was a military-led colonizing expedition and to establish Spanish power through colonization. And um, that came at the, uh, the expense of the indigenous people and their cultures. Um, the other elements on the, on the next page of the foundation document um, pull out the fundamental resource and values the, our work is a retracement project in the sense that we are retracing a historic corridor 
Um, and in that process, that includes uh, recreational trail by working with partners to uh, both implement the recreational trail and to do storytelling uh, and broaden the narratives. Um, it also includes historic sites, artifacts, primary sources, and documents. And, and I think a really core part of what our work is, it, it involves education and, and interpretation. Um, in that regard, uh, the interpretive themes section, um, I think we put, we put a lot of work into this. And again, we thank those who were a part of that process. Um, this uh, work ended up kind of, it, it, it ex extended the time period for us to get this document completed. And I think it was really critical. Um, the interpretive themes here, again, I'm not going to go through all of them. I think uh, I, so, some of you have uh, have seen, seen these before. Um, and uh, we want to share them with you more broadly, and we, we plan to. Um, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time on, on, on going through each and every one of the new interpretive themes. But I did want to kind of frame them in, a, in areas of, uh, of focus areas. And so we can think of all of these landing in one of these three categories. Um, the Anza story and its history and telling that story. Um, and then the, you know, the broadening of that narrative to, if you look at this first uh, interpretive theme, the bullet number one, um, that the network of trails that became the expedition route and the Anza Trail have existed for millennia as indigenous pathways. There are, are ways to enter into the storytelling and ways to, of connecting with the Anza history that are broader than, than 1775 and 1776. And I think that's an important acknowledgement in, um, in, in our storytelling. Uh, another focus area that we would look at are native communities. Um, the native communities that existed and where the, uh, the Anza Trail passes through and then the current and thriving native cultures that exist today along the Anza Corridor. Um, and the third we call emerging culture. And in that sense, we define that as the present informed by the past. Um, and so a good example of this would be um, the, the work that we did recently with the, uh, uh, that we worked with Border Community Alliance in um, producing a documentary film about the pilgrimage to Magdalena in which um, the Tanatham and other indigenous people and people from all over the world uh, at, in uh, the first week of October walk from their homes to Magdalena in Kino or, or uh, in um, Sonora. And um, they are walking along the Anza Trail path. It's a pilgrimage to a site that's important to them. And there's that embodied experience. Um, and so that's what we're going to focus on today. We're really going to focus on the highlighted theme here, and that is the theme of today's call. Um, the Anza Trail and its development connect people and cultures through time. The embodied experience of traversing the trail creates a deeper, uh, creates a setting for deeper dialogue about colonization, changing landscapes, and cultural heritage. So, what does embodied experience mean? And um, and I think that uh, is important to, to maybe define that as before we move into, before I introduce our, our, our guest presenters today. And the way that I look at it is um, there are ways that we can understand this history. And, there are, and, and a lot of the ways that we understand this history are through ways that in maybe arenas that we are very familiar with by telling stories, by uh, writing interpretive text on a panel somewhere that somebody might happen upon and get to learn about it um, through videos, et cetera. But there are ways of, no, of, of, of obtaining knowledge that uh, come from experience. And there's something very important about trails and important about uh, 
traversing the landscape that informs us. It's a it's it's walking as as ritual, and it's a way of really understanding this story in a deeper way. And it also sets the stage here, as it says in this uh, interpretive theme, for as a setting for having deeper conversations and dialogues about difficult things, um, and also presents an opportunity for those what I what, what I call the 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 windshield conversation. Uh, there are the conversations that you have where you're looking at one another. Uh, and you're talking to them, and it's very direct and intimate. But then there are the conversations that you need to have where you're both looking at the horizon. And I think those are important conversations to have, and there's an opportunity to use this trail that we are building together um, as a setting to have those types of conversations. And there's a really important setting and environment there that I think we can uh, really lean into. Um, and we have a couple people on the call today that um, are guest presenters that are very well versed in this type of work, and we're really excited to to pass it over to them to talk more about pilgrimage, to talk more about meaningful experiences on the landscape, and um, how those tie to our identity, how those tie to storytelling, connecting the past to the present, and then the present informing the future. Um, it's all this ideas of emergent culture and and that we get really excited about. So we're we're really honored to have them with us today. Um, I'm going to stop sharing here, and then I'll introduce them quickly and pass it over to them. Um, one moment here. So today we have with us uh, Sandy Brown, and Sandy Brown is one of the world's premier pilgrimage trekking guidebook authors. Uh, he has a popular guide to the Camino de Santiago in, in Spain and parts of France, um, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. We refer to it as, as the, you know, the mother of all trails, um, and uh, we're really happy to have him here with us. He has walked and cycled more than 10,000 miles on pilgrimage itineraries in, in Europe and the United States. He serves as the associate publisher for Cicerone Press in the UK. Um, and Sandy is, is uh, has a home in Seattle, uh, but he spends a lot of his time in, in uh, Lucca in Italy. And we also have with us uh, Mark Wilkinson. He's the executive director uh, for Santa Barbara County Trails Council. Um, uh, Mark has uh, has been a champion of new trail projects and programs for over a decade. We've worked with him really closely over the years. Um, under his leadership, he has uh, planned and developed 20 plus miles of new trails throughout Santa Barbara County. In addition, uh, he's helped to launch the innovative and countywide Healthy People, Healthy, Tra Healthy Trails Initiative, uh, a long distance multi-trail wayfinding project. Uh, and co-founded the statewide California Mission Trail Alliance. Um, he's his experience developing and implementing projects in various industries, including construction and software and marketing for private and nonprofit organizations, has laid uh, a foundation for his work with the Trails Council. So we are very happy to have them, and I'm going to pass it over to them. Great, thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. What an honor for us to be here with you today. Thank you for this opportunity. So with those introductions out of the way, I think we could uh, sort of jump into our presentation. And we've set up a uh, agenda for today, and I'm not gonna go through it in detail, but uh, basically uh, we're gonna sort of walk through our experience uh, with the California Missions Trail and then share uh, some of those experiences with you as we go through our short presentation today. Um, some of you on the call may have seen the longer version of this, so it'll be a little bit of a rerun, but uh, we have emphasis on the Juan Batista de Anza Trail and where it overlaps with the California Missions Trail, which is quite interesting. Um, 
First of all, I really have to thank the board for the Santa Barbara County Trails Council for their support for this project. Um, without them, it wouldn't have happened. And this wasn't one of those things that was just signed off and charged ahead. Uh, we had uh, many, many meetings on the topic. There's a lot of controversial topics, as well as uh, the importance of it within our county and the state. And so it was really well um, hashed over by the board. And ultimately, they came to the conclusion that it was a, the project that we should be involved with. Um, and a big part of that reason was that over 50 years ago, the Trails Council Board put out a proposal for a countywide trail system that included coastal trail and mission to mission trails. So during my tenure, uh, we've been trying to fulfill that vision established uh, over 50 years ago. And fortunately, um, the work that we've done with Sandy helps us check off part of that um, long standing vision. So one of the good things about Santa Barbara County is that it happens to be in a location where um, everybody got pinched to come through uh, a space between the ocean and the, our coastal mountains. So we have the same footprint almost for the California Coastal Trail, which is a modern trail uh, identified in the 1980s. The Juan Batista Danza Trail, which has its 250 year history, but uh, came into being a federal recognized trail in the 90s. And then the California Missions Trail, as well as uh, several biking routes. And uh, I think about 2016, we received a grant from the ANZA uh, group to do way, uh, wayfinding, not, excuse me, to do interpretive panels. And in the process of figuring out where they would be placed in the county, I realized that there was no signing to let you know that you were on the ANZA Trail. And if we were to sign the ANZA Trail, we would have to sign the California Coastal Trail and the California Missions Trail. So it became um, a little bit more complicated and we reached out to the uh, National Park Service uh, Rivers Trails and Conservation Assistance Program and received a grant to do that wayfinding. And as we got started, uh, we discovered that there were many, many organizations supporting the California Missions, the California Mission Trail, but there wasn't one group that was a collaborative or an alliance, nor were there uh, state or federal organizations supporting it. So that was one of the issues that we were trying to deal with. And we were very, very fortunate. Um, the Sally Sheridan with the National Park Service picked up one of Sandy's books while she was on vacation in Europe and came back and uh, showed me a copy of it. And she said, you know, this is a fabulous way to showcase the California Missions Trail by doing this kind of book. And of course, I thought it was a great idea, uh, but it didn't seem really possible. Um, but the rest of the story is it did happen and that's why we're here today. And so our project for the California Missions Trail started out to be just our, the five missions in the Santa Barbara area from Ventura to San Luis Obispo, but uh, gradually expanded to include uh, the whole 800 miles where we're looking not only at the missions as landmarks, but other historical landmarks along the route, uh, the various cultures, um, the 250 plus years of history that makes up uh, that route from uh, the colonial period uh, up until modern times. And then there's the fabulous landscapes that uh, bring Cal people to California uh, year after year. Um, without all the uh, support that we've had from organizations all over the country, uh, we wouldn't be this far along. Um, we have a core group uh, mostly based in Santa Barbara with uh, California Missions Foundation and um, the uh, Santa Barbara Mission, as well as support from the California Mission Walkers, uh, the Rotary Clubs in Santa Barbara, and then uh, I would say only a fraction of the organizations supporting uh, the trail are shown on uh, this screen, but it gives you an idea of we're working to be very collaborative. And 
At this point, in the interest of time, I'd like to turn this show over to Sandy Brown. So I'm going to stop sharing and Sandy will pick up. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, you are so humble to describe uh, your role in such a way. You're really the mastermind of this all. And I'm so lucky to have um, been at the right place at the right time. If not for COVID, I would have been writing a guidebook to the Via Francigena in Europe in 2020 and 2021. Instead, I got to discover some about my roots as a native Californian who moved to Seattle at seven years old and lives in Italy now. I want to start my part of the conversation with a quotation from a Chumash Native American poet and author who also lives in Seattle by the name of Deborah Miranda. Culture is ultimately lost when we stop telling the stories of who we are, where we've been, how we arrived here, what we once knew, and what we wish we knew. And this so much fits my own life. Now, I'm a guidebook writer, and I have six guidebooks out. And my most popular guidebook is this guidebook and map book on the Camino de Santiago. And as you may know, the Camino goes across Spain. It begins in France, crosses the Pyrenees, and then ends at Santiago de Compostela. And people have been walking this Camino for over a thousand years. You can also continue on to the Atlantic. I first walked this Camino in 2008. Here I am in the Pyrenees with three American women recently graduated from St. Louis University. And Christopher was talking earlier about embodied experiences. I've walked the Camino now four times, have a guidebook on it. Here I am with my wife, and I'm not alone. 400,000 people walked the Camino last year. And this year, the numbers are even bigger. And I believe what's happening with people is that they are experiencing something with, the, with their feet and with their nostrils and with their senses that is so different from other kinds of tourism. It's about landscapes, it's about cultures, it's about peoples, but it's also about experience. And with our bodies moving through a landscape and a culture that transforms us, it doesn't just educate us, it transforms us. And so 400,000 people follow these yellow arrows across Spain every year. And it's not just because they're all trying to get there. It's because the journey itself has meaning. So these are some of my guidebooks. And when I was contacted by Mark and other members of the California Missions Trail Alliance, I began work on putting together this new Cicerone Press guidebook on the 800-mile trail. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm from California. And as I researched this book and walked in an embodied experience in California and rode the route also two times on my bicycle, 
I came to understand California a little better. Here I am with the REI in Santa Barbara, so happy that we had a few copies of the Finnish guidebook, and I've been signing it for people. It's available there and, of course, on Amazon. I love this picture of the California poppy because it's one of the things that you see all through the California Missions Walk. And the landscape and California is the star. And when I say that, I'm not just talking about the landscape, but also the culture and people and history. So here's a, an example of a two-page uh, spread of the guidebook. Here we're at Mission San Luis Rey in Oceanside. Here's a watercolor what? painting of someone that few people know, but is the key participant in the mission trail. And we have focused the story in the guidebook on people like him. I'll come back to his story later. And in the guidebook, we give everything a person needs to be able to walk the mission trail from north to south, or they can also use the book from the back to the front. And this is an example on the left of one of our maps. It's the stage from Mission San Luis Rey to San Diego. You can see photographs are shared, also distances, services at each of the towns. And one reason why we decided to go north to south is this last stage from Oceanside to San Diego is pretty fabulous. So it's not the only stage and it's not the only fabulous thing at all on the mission strip. Looking at the sections from the book, we start in the Bay Area with Mission Sonoma in uh, Sonoma County. We follow mostly bike trails down to San Rafael. At Larkspur, you can either take the ferry across the bay or take the Golden Gate Bridge and make your way to Mission San Francisco. Uh, the first time I walked this, I happened to be accompanied by Naomi Torres. And we walked and talked together about the De Anza Trail and also about how to interpret colonial history based on its um, romanticized versions and its newly more realistic versions. And some of the things Naomi said to me became very important in my approach to this book. So you continue down the peninsula, you can either cross the Dumbarton Bridge or take the south part of the Bay Trail to get to Mission San Jose in Fremont cross Silicon Valley, cross the Santa Cruz Mountains, and end up where Christopher lives for at least a little while in Santa Cruz. And these are some of the landmarks along the way. So it does become an interesting part of history just to look at the buildings and their status today. Mission Sonoma, San Rafael, San Francisco, San Jose, Santa Clara, and Santa Cruz. And many of them have a worshiping community. In the case of Mission Santa Clara, it is a chapel at Santa Clara University. Mission Santa Cruz has a replica building but there's some of the original adobe where the soldiers lived that's adjacent to that site. So you can begin to see some of the colonial history that is 
depicted in these buildings that fourth graders throughout California were studying and that are so much a part of California history. And the North Central Coast section, you go from Santa Cruz across into the San Benito Valley at San Juan Bautista, back across Salinas and the Salinas Valley into Monterey and then Mission Carmel. You re-enter the Salinas Valley, and I see we have someone on the call here today from the Salinas Valley Visitor Center. And you go to, then to Mission Soledad through King City up into Fort Hunter Liggett. And this incredible place, Mission San Antonio, which is pretty much, you can imagine at least how it's pretty much like it would have been uh, 250 years ago. Here are some of the buildings along the way. Some of them, historic buildings such as San Juan Bautista, and Mission Carmel and Mission San Antonio, some of them reproductions like Mission Soledad. And the South Central Coast area, we go from Mission San Miguel and the what's called the Lower Salinas Valley, even though it's upriver, and through Atascadero, San Luis Obispo, and the mission there. And then we enter Santa Barbara County. We come down to Lompoc and Mission La Purisima. There should be a symbol here for Mission Santinez across the Santinez Mountains and to Santa Barbara and Ventura. Again, this is spectacular scenery. Here's an example of it in this picture of Pismo Beach. Again, we have historic buildings. One of the most historic is Mission San Miguel and Mission San Luis Obispo, Santa Inez, Mission Santa Barbara are historic as well. Mission La Prisima was rebuilt by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s. And uh, there is still some of the artwork present from Native American times. Here's the beautiful plaza at Mission Ventura. From there, we cross to the um, San Fernando Valley for Mission San Fernando. And we head down then on the outskirts of the Los Angeles Basin to Anaheim Fullerton to San Juan Capistrano, where my family uh, settled after walking from Mexico in the 1860s. And then here is Mission San Luis Rey at Oceanside, and we end up finally in San Diego at Mission San Diego. Again, historic buildings, and at uh, Mission San Juan Capistrano is one of the oldest buildings in California, and that's the Sarah Chapel at Mission San Juan Capistrano. My grandfather was baptized there, and my great-grandparents were married in this chapel. So it has importance for me. This is my family. My great-grandparents walked from Sinaloa to Southern California. Maybe they went on the De Anza Trail. We don't know their exact itinerary. And uh, my great-grandmother had 17 children. 11 of them survived. Here are pictures of eight of them, some with their spouses and family. This is my grandfather in the lower left, and this is my mother, who's 92 years old. And Mission Samoa Capistrano is important to us, and our roots are in the Hispanic um, 
populations that arrived during the American period. Now, as I wrote the book, it became important to find a way to interpret Spanish history, Mexican, American history, and American colonial history in California. This painting, the, one of the originals of this painting, is in Mission Carmel, Mission San uh, Carlos Borromeo in Carmel. And to me, it symbolizes the romantic viewpoint of California history. Here in the center is Junipero Serra, and he is saying mass under what can be known as the Serra Oak. Behind him are soldiers, and with the soldiers are settlers. And you can see a ship in the distance, maybe a representation of Porto La's ship on which Sarah arrived. You see some horses and some forests. And back here in the shadows, and it says so much of this painting has them in the shadows are some Native Americans also right here. And these Native Americans, just like the Spaniards, are kneeling in worship at the Mass of Sarah. And this painting was made in about 1880, approximately. And that's the beginning of the Romantic era when colonization was, quote, bringing the gospel and bringing Western culture to the benighted Native Americans who lived in California. And that's an important part of the story. So here's Mission Carmel right here. And when the settlers and soldiers and missionaries arrived, beginning in 1769, they came to a place that was already populated. There were 300,000 people by estimates in California already when the first Spaniards began settlement. Here's a map that we include in the book with some of the names of some of the local tribes that would have been met by the settlers and the uh, missionaries and the soldiers. And they aren't just a then there was, they are a now they are also. Here's a photograph shared with us by the Sentinel's Band of Chumash Indians of some young members of the tribe. There is a Native American history in California that's being written today, and we wanted to tell some about that. As we talk about how we would depict colonial history, we look for stories of Native Americans, and we highlighted those in a specific strategy to tell their story as opposed to the romantic story that's all about the Padres or it's all about the heroic Spanish uh, uh, navigators and soldiers and settlers too. So for instance, in the upper left is a mural that's on a building in California that remembers Toy Purina, who was a member of the Gabrieleno tribe and led a revolt against Mission San Gabriel. Here in the middle is Pablo Tac, who I referenced earlier. Obviously, these are artistic representations. Pablo Tac was taken from his tribe at present-day Mission San Luis Rey as a 10-year-old boy and was sent with the priests at San Luis Rey to Rome. He died there at the age of 19 
after putting together a dictionary and history of his people, his firsthand stories of mission life are one of the most important documents that we have. And they were written in Rome. He died at 19 of color. Some people don't know that Stanislaus County is named after Chief Stanislaus or Chief Stanislaus, who was a, quote, Mission Indian from Mission San Jose. And with three to 5,000 uh, Native Americans, he built a community in the San Joaquin Valley and raided Mission San Jose of its herds and also the settlement at San Jose and the mission at Santa Clara. And at the bottom is uh, Juana Maria, who was abandoned accidentally and left for 18 years, I think it is, on one of the Channel Islands off Santa Barbara until they found her again and brought her to Santa Barbara. Hers is the story of the blue dolphin that kids read in school. And it's important to tell. But this fellow on the left, I think, is uh, quite has a quite interesting story. His name is Lope Inigo. And he was a member of a tribe at the mission Santa Clara. And he's one of a very small handful of Native Americans that lived in the mission era, in the Mexican era, and then into the American era. We usually say the mission era ended with Mexico's victory over Spain in 1821. It then ended uh, at the time of the American victory over, or the Mexican period, was from 1821 until the uh, American uh, time in 1849 or 1850, 51, as California became part of the United States, which is when the worst atrocities against the Native Americans began. So what's fun about the book is taking the opportunity to tell Native American stories in what formerly had been a romanticized story of white uh, conquerors coming and transforming the landscape and people of California. So for instance, Mission San Miguel has artworks that exist to this day that were painted by Native American artists. This is a painting from Mission Santa Inez by a Native American man of Saint Raphael, the angel. And to me, it's quite fascinating to, from an art history perspective, to look at this, at the face, which represents not a European face, but a Native American face. And then the clothing, which represents Native American clothing, all wrapped inside of a biblical story. St. Raphael was an angel, and in European art history, he is often shown with wings, a staff, and a fish because of a miracle that is recorded in the book of Tobit, where blindness was cured with the gall of a fish liver. So it's a Native American um, transitional piece. And to me, it's, an, it's a priceless artwork done by an anonymous artist. The Santa Inez Band of Chumash Indians has put together a new museum, which will be opening very soon. And it's just about one mile off of the Missions Trail. I'm so delighted that we were able to have architectural renderings like this 
so we could describe it to people who walk the missions trail so they can experience it for themselves. Okay, Mark, it's your turn. We have an inter interactive map that's online. There's different trails you can turn on and off. And I'm gonna show very quickly just the points where the California Missions Trail overlaps uh, the Juan Batista de Anza corridor. And in this map, you can see that um, the pink line is the De Anza corridor and the um, purple line is where they overlap. And pretty much, uh, you know, one-to-one -one match through this area. Um, for modern times, uh, we go across the Dumbarton Bridge to get over to uh, Mission San Jose. But we also have an alternate uh, route that goes along the bottom of the bay, which would pretty much mirror uh, the historic route. And then we jump into a series of valleys here and a pretty much one-to-one -one, uh, match in route uh, from that area. Going south of King City, uh, very closely matched. Um, this is... Uh, military base here. So we go down to the main entry road, a uh, Halone road, rather than cutting across uh, the base, but uh, quite similar. And in this area, generally, it's uh, sparsely populated. So um, in our route, we're following um, existing routes. And then uh, moving on to the Paso Robles, uh, San Luis Obispo corridor, one-to-one -one match. And this is kind of interesting here in the Pismo Beach to Casmalia area. Um, the California Missions walkers have all gone this way uh, from San Luis Obispo down to Pismo, but actually um, the De Anza corridor is a bicycle route that could be incorporated as an alternate route. So a, a way to pick up uh, 12 miles of uh, matching track in that way, uh, either um, by design or otherwise. And then in the Santa Barbara area, if we go from uh, Refugio Road or Refugio State Park, uh, again, we have a pretty good match. Um, we go a little more scenic here through UCSB uh, campus. Um, and there's some new uh, multi-use uh, trails in this area that match the De Anza. And then we're pretty much a one-to-one -one match down to Ventura. And lastly, uh, if we go from Ventura over to uh, San, San Fernando, is that no, San Gabriel, um, you can see that um, when uh, Juan came through, uh, San, Ga San Fernando was an established mission. So he just cut across, but we're trying to pick up that mission. So doing some quick math, that's about 300 miles out of uh, the 800 mile California emissions trail that's a match. And wanted to kind of quickly just pose some uh, questions about what's next. And not that I'm going to answer them today, but um, is there a significance that these two historic routes uh, have mirrored uh, footprints in much of the area? Uh, should there be a cooperative effort uh, to lift all boats um, in this uh, arena? And um, as far as I know, there isn't um, a California Historic Trail Association. Um, but there are quite a few historic trails that crisscross California. So maybe uh, a collaborative effort might be of interest. And that opens the door for two minutes of Q&A. And I apologize, we ran a little long. Thank you, Mark and Sandy. Okay. Yeah, we. Um, I know Mark will have to jump off here in a couple of minutes, but... Um, and and we respect your time if you need to to leave today early uh, at the top of the hour. But I will also be uh, here if we want to continue the discussion. But just wanted to thank Mark and Sandy for for that presentation. And uh, 
Yeah, that was great. And we do have some comments in the chat um, and just wanted to open up for any other questions that you might have um, in this last couple of minutes with, well, we have Mark here. Yeah, Greg. Well, thank you both for that uh, uh, excellent presentation. How do you see with all of these different groups uh, over time uh, that have done work in this area or are doing it, how do you see a mechanism for collaborating to create something while not reinventing the wheel? In other words, a lot of good work has been done. A lot of work is being done. How do we bring people together to do something good that brings everything that I just said all together? Go ahead, Mark. Okay. Uh, I would say we're trying. We're trying to figure out you know, how to uh, make this happen. Uh, personally, I'm involved in a lot of successful collaborations. And I think each one on this call probably has some sort of collaboration that's worked well for them. What's interesting is um, I just learned uh, this week about a Bay Area um, trail collaborative. And there's no reason why that group wouldn't be part of something uh, bigger. Um, and I went to the Trails and Greenways Conference it's sponsored by State Parks. And that's a great platform, it happens every year. Um, but, you know, they're focused on um, different projects that come up around the state, but there's no reason that there couldn't be a historical focus. Um, and I think just sort of have to push the envelope a little bit. Collaboration seems to uh, work well in many, many instances. This might be one of them. Before we go on to our next question, I just want to say um, Stella Cardoza, who's on the call, asked me about relatives in San Juan Capistrano, and we have some in common. So we are um, we're related. Oh, what a fun thing, Stella. Very cool. That's great. Uh, Sam, uh, would you like to speak? Yeah, thank you. Um, I worked on the Ohlone Portola Heritage Trail Feasibility Study. I've been having a dialogue with Mark and Sandy about that and, uh, and Naomi Torres as well. Um, just wanted, based on a conversation I had earlier with Mark, you know, there is a, a California recreational trail plan that acknowledges 26 state recognized trails of which um, I believe this trail, the California Coastal Trail, the Bay Trail around San Francisco Bay, amongst others are acknowledged. Um, but I'm just wondering how is that trail you how is that trail plan used by the state of California or how could it be used to uh, to acknowledge regional efforts and in fact, um, promote um, uh, and help develop those regional trails? Um, it, it's more of a question. Um, I would love to see the Ohlone Portola Heritage Trail in San Mateo County added to that recreational trail plan. And I would like to see it linked to this trail um, because of our connections to the Sanchez Adobe and and I also would like to see more connections to the Portola expedition, which was the precursor to the Juan Bautista de Anza Trail. And lastly, I just would like to see uh, a map of, of tribal territories in California um, as well uh, with the with this trail. Uh, that was one of the key points of our Ohlone Portola Heritage Trails, acknowledging the tribal territories we were going through. Thank you. Christopher, this is Lynn and hello group. I probably am representative of the East Bay uh, area that you were speaking of. And uh, we, when we 
learned about this, it was through one of our organization's efforts on educating the next generation on our historic American trails. And when we started talking with the uh, uh, Christopher and uh, Ives at the um, National Park Service at the John Muir site, uh, we discussed many options. So we would, we're very interested in looking forward to being able to do some collaborative work. Thank you, Lynn. And thank you, Sam, for your comments. Yeah, I, I, um, I see there's a lot of overlap. Um, sorry, sorry, Lynn, just to go back to Sam's comments, but um, I do see there's a lot of overlap and a lot of, uh, and to the comments here, um, this is what, this is our work that we're leading up to the, you know, to the commemorative year is, is really, there are people do it that are doing a lot of work around these, these trails, a lot around these itineraries, a, a lot around storytelling and uh, centering indigenous voices in, in that storytelling, broadening the narrative, telling this complex story. This is a very complicated story and the ways that it has been told in the past has avoided that aspect in, in a lot of regards. And I think we're really excited to look looking at the complexity, which means bringing other work and kind of, uh, and really looking at, uh, you know, to Greg's comment, not reinventing the wheel where it comes into some places, but really trying to, to, to lift all boats, boats. So I really appreciate the comments. And um, I do agree that that it's important in representation to, to show native lands uh, when uh, when using maps, and um, I think those are good practices moving forward. Um, thanks for those who stayed on. We still have some more questions. I just did want to to share a couple of things. I'll share one in the chat. Um, that uh, let's see if I can do everyone here. Um, for those that are interested in um, learning more about the the documentary, the award winning documentary, the Pilgrimage to Magdalena, which was done in partnership with one of our partners at in Borderland Community Alliance in Southern Arizona, I'm going to put the um, link to that that in the chat. You can um, contact them to do a viewing of it for your organization, um, and also uh, learn more about that project. Uh, it's a really interesting and and well done uh, video and. Um, also shows maybe the the ways that we partner with groups. It, we're really interested in the ways that the trail corridor is being used today. Um, that means migrant workers traveling between the uh, Imperial Valley and Salinas Valley every year. That includes those who use the trail as a as a pilgrimage that's not related to colonial history, um, because these are all corridors that people have used for a very long time, and those are stories that need to be told as well. Um, so that that's an example of that. Also, uh, June 3rd is National Trails Day. So if you're doing something uh, or would like to plan something around that date, uh, around Onsa Trail or, or trails that exist in, in your organizations or in your community, let us know. And we can either highlight those on our National Park Service, uh, excuse me, uh, calendar and events, or we can put those on our blog as well or to help to promote one another. Um, and, uh, yeah, just that little wanted to inject that before everybody leaves, but wanted to uh, if anybody else has uh, questions or comments um, and wants to hang out for a little while longer, uh, we're available. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. It, very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you. Great. Thank you all so much for this opportunity to share with you. And uh, thanks for connecting me with Stella. <laughs> Take care now. Bye, Stella. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Bye.